When it comes to perseverance in the midst of pain, Pelini could take a lesson from his junior safety, Ricky Tanars. From growing up in Watts to facing horrific tragedy in the past years, uh, Tanars' life has really been enveloped by violence as he pursues a brighter life in Nebraska. Shelly Smith has his story. <laughs> It means floats and parades, pomp and circumstance. But for University of Nebraska junior safety Ricky Tanars, homecoming means his family has to come to him because he says he can't go home. I don't want to go home and, and, you know, someone does something to me or I have to do something to someone to protect myself or put someone else in harm's way. Ricky was born and raised in Watts, a community in Los Angeles rife with gang violence. Just gun shooting, man. You gotta watch your back. Everywhere you go around here, that's crazy, that's the crazy violence. Over here in Watts. Ricky grew up two blocks from the Jordan Downs housing projects, home to the Grape Street Crips, a gang his brothers became a part of. A young Ricky excelled on the football field, but found trouble off it. He want to fight everybody. That's how he was. He changed him, though. That camp changed him. That camp was Camp Holton, a California juvenile detention center where Ricky spent the ninth grade. I said, when I get out, I'm going to change my life around and leave that life alone. Really leave that life alone, and that's what I did. I got out. Um, first day I went to Jordan, checked in. I um, signed up for the football team. At Jordan High School, Ricky focused on grades and football and earned a scholarship to the University of Nebraska. But six days before he left for Lincoln, the violence caught up with him. Some dudes pull up to my car and shoot the car up. The back windows, all side windows, went through the dashboard. The back seat, shot the tires out, everything. And I didn't get hit not one time. He calls me uh, that night and he said, you know, if, if you don't get me out of here, I'm gonna be dead. Far from the violence, nestled in the relative serenity of Nebraska, Go! Ricky was named the Cornhuskers Special Teams Player of the Year in 2006 and 2007. Everything was just going great. You know, once you do good, you know, there's always a devil that's going to be right there to do something, to always try to derail you off doing something positive. And honest to God, I said, something's going to happen to one of my brothers, and it happened. Back in L.A., Ricky's brother Brandon had become a leader of the Grape Street Crips. On January 27th, he was at a party a few miles from the area his gang ran. He was shot and killed. Police suspect a rival Crips gang. It all started with some girls fighting, and someone put out a gun. And when someone put out a gun, more people start pulling out guns. And when you intoxicated and you off them drugs, you get paranoid, and people just start shooting. Brandon's death ignited one of the worst gang retaliations in recent L.A. history. It started a war. One of the most violent uh, episodes of, you know, the, the conflict ever. And it's still going on. Ricky went home for Brandon's funeral, where his brother, Kiwan, addressed the overflow crowd. What you know? Less than two months later, Ricky returned home for spring break. On March 18th, he was out with Kiwan when violence struck again. We're walking up and I noticed the guy, he was my brother, was like, Ricky man, just leave. All you hear is someone say, run, he got like he got a gun. So everyone scattered and went start running to the front. This truck pulls up and this guy sticks the gun out the window and, and um, shoots my brother. 
Kiwan was rushed from the scene to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. With retaliation on his mind, Ricky said goodbye to a second brother. It was like, like something just in my, like a voice, his voice in my head just said, please don't do nothing stupid and just, man, like the exact words like, please don't do nothing stupid, man, just keep, keep going hard and, 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 and live this dream, man, I'm okay, I'm with Brandon now. Ricky attended Kiwan's funeral, but did not stay for the burial, concerned that he had been marked up, targeted to be killed next. And Brandon and Kiwan, man, untouchables, man. You never think, man, both of them gone, man. You Within two months, man, you think it can't happen to you? you think it can't happen to me, man? The game ain't the life, it's over. For everyone out there, man, it's over. That's, that's stupid. Ricky's smart, he got it, Ricky. He going to school, he, 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 he trying to get up out of here. That made, that pushed him, like, to just go harder, man. Like, man, really get away from here. And Ricky has some fans that gather at the Watts Coffee House to root on the Huskers wearing red in a neighborhood that was once marked by blue, but thanks to Ricky's example, we're told the, the grip of gang violence in that area beginning to loosen just a bit.